Welcome everyone to another video of Body's Passive Income. Today I'm going to go over the top five things I wish I knew when I started merch, whether it was before or just during merch. Uh, these are things that, as you can see right here, I got three rejections. Uh, things like this that just really kind of frustrate me. Things that would have streamlined the process so I wouldn't have to manually do stuff and whatnot and I have a little list that I wrote down here so I'm going to read from the list so number one uh this one's going to be pretty obvious to some of you guys is oh, sorry I didn't turn that noise off so if you hear that it's going to be a sale that's the pretty merch add-on for those who don't uh have it I would recommend it uh that's what this interface is so the what I didn't know is not everyone gets accepted when I first applied back in March 2020 I just applied and I got it and I just assume just like Etsy and everything else everybody gets it uh, I found out when I told my cousin hey you should be selling shirts on Amazon uh, that not everybody actually gets accepted I don't think he's yet to be accepted and he's applied probably like six or seven times at this point with different accounts so uh, what I wish I knew is you know what are the actual exception rules uh which i don't know because i would i like to help out other people i like to help out you guys i see in some of the comments how do i get accepted into merch how do i do this how do i do that so i actually have a video on what i think is the best way to get accepted into merch uh, i would recommend checking that out but at the same time uh I also don't want to promote something like I did to my cousin, say, oh, look at all these fantastic things you can do, and then you go to apply for it, and you don't actually get it, and then I look like the a-hole. So uh, that, that's, you know, starting out, not everybody gets accepted. I wish I would have known that, or if I'm new, I wish I would know that and not just assume that I'm going to get accepted into it. So looking at the list, uh, there's different size requirements. So if you go and you create something, and I'm going to go into this screen right here, uh, as you can see, there's different requirements for premium. I'm sure Reagan, Reagan, I don't even know how to pronounce that. Pullover hoodies, zip hoodies, uh, pop sockets, iPhone cases. These are all different requirements. And there's actually a requirements page. Um, view artwork guidelines right here. There's actually a requirements page that say what are the requirements 4500 by 5400 PNG. You want everything to look good on black. Uh, they give you some templates right here. Um, they unfortunately they give it to you in Photoshop, uh, which not everybody has because it's expensive. Uh, GIMP, which is kind of like a free Photoshop. I'm not a huge GIMP fan. I use GitPaint.net. Um, or I use Canva, uh, link down in the description uh, if you're interested in that. And I just preset the 4500 by 5400 when I'm doing Canva. Uh, and then pop sockets, all this stuff are just uh, cell phone cases are relatively new. I don't know if you all have cell phone cases unlocked yet. I do. Uh, I've listed some. I have yet to sell one. I've actually never even listed a pop socket. And I know some people sell pop sockets. I've just never ever tried so I, it's probably a missed opportunity but i see in some people sales that they actually sell pop sockets so maybe i'll take like my designs that sell the most and i'll create pop sockets on it so that's what i i, I wish i knew is it's not a one-size-fits-all approach and with that though there are so i'm looking at my nose there are some things you can do so you don't have to redo it a hundred different times and that's merchresize.com so what you can do is you can take your normal 4500 uh, by 5400 which is pretty standard and you can also use this on Etsy for Printful, Printify, whatever it is that's typically what I do and then so I took this one I always name all my designs with merch so I know it's actually those actual dimensions you click it and then you can see you, oh I want it to be a pop socket I want it to be a hoodie I want it to be an iPhone case I want blah 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 so pop socket all of a sudden it's going to do it in the pop socket dimension that's a quick way to do it so you don't have to sit there and resize it yourself because that is a complete pain in the butt um i don't recommend necessarily especially if you're in tier 10 to just you know do everything under the sun i have another video if you haven't checked it out how to get out of tier 10 um not to do all these different designs since i'm tier 1000 i usually stick with the standard v-neck tank top and since uh uh, winter's coming in September, you know, I'm starting to do some long sleeve and then I'll, I'll do some hoodies or the more popular ones, I'll do some hoodies because it is an, a, an additional design, design step with resizing them where these are not. So if you're in tier 10, don't do that. Maybe do a pop socket because I see some people sell it. 
uh, sell them, but do standard t-shirts. And then once you're at like tier 100 and tier 50 and you don't have a lot of designs, then you can start doing this. But I'm really going to just focus on doing the designs that sell, not every single one, because that's just, it's a lot, unless you're using automation tools, which I'm not, because I'm not necessarily a huge fan of them, just because uh, you have to have a lot to upload and I, I don't upload every single day. So uh, number three, trademark copyright issues. This happens to me all the time where you'll put something um like buy karen or don't be a karen which is for those who don't know is kind of like uh, somebody who's always in your business uh type of deal um and then all of a sudden you get uh trademarked and, and they'll reject you either right away you'll get a rejection notice for your copyright or trademark or you'll it'll be under investigation when you post something for like two days and you don't even know uh, and then you'll get a rejection but you can look up the uspto or whatever country you're from and you can see there's no trademark for it or that trademark applies to purses it doesn't apply to t-shirts so then i well what i wish i knew is at first i would just take what merch would tell me at face value like oh okay i can't do this design i can't it, it won't allow me now i've learned to just actually message them um and say or reply to them say hey this is not copyright or trademark here's the uspto with the the link and i say please provide uh evidence that this is trademark and i would say nine out of ten times they say okay please republish it they don't even fight you on it obviously if something's trademark and copyright and it actually is like you put like lakers or something like that uh don't don't try to fight it pick your battles but there's a lot of things because they run automated software where they just oh, there's another sale where they just uh sweep through and don't even actually check anything so you can push back you know but don't get crazy with it. Um, so that that's just a little something I wish I knew because I would just give up a lot. Um, and just, you know, even if I spent money on design on Etsy or something like that. Or uh, simple as I use the sunsets from all sunsets. Link down in the description if you're interested. Um, and, and I would just get rejected for some random word. So uh, you can push back if you are right. If you are not right, don't push back. I do not recommend it. Uh, number four, use sizes. This is another tricky one. Um, Amazon will reject some stuff that if by default use sizes is checked. Now you can pre-select everything and then save as default so you don't or save as published settings so you don't have to do it again. But use sizes do sell. But stuff like Pro Trump, they will reject you for use sizing guidelines. I cannot tell you why, but they won't reject you for pro Biden or, or, or anti-Trump one. So there's some political stuff going on there. Uh, also, any of the Black Lives Matter stuff, Black AF, anything like that, any type of protest type thing, they won't allow you sizing at all. Um, but you're like, okay, fine, I just won't tell you sizings. Well, this comes down to number five. Uh, you can't edit rejections, which this is really, 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 really annoying. So use size only applies, as you can see, um, I'm not sure about the the hoodies, but you can see there's no use size, n no use size, because it's a unisex, no use size. Uh, so it only affects t-shirts. So what will happen is if I do like a Black Lives Matter shirt, for instance, or a pro Trump shirt, for instance, I upload it. I say, oh, okay, everything looks great. You, you know, I fill everything out, and then all of a sudden I get a, a rejection. And it's like, oh, crap, I forgot to uncheck U size. But since all of these other ones don't have U sizes, I have these will actually get published, and Standard Shirt won't. Standard Shirt's the one that actually sells. I can't then go back into my rejection and uncheck U size because it's actually grayed out at that point. At that point, I just delete everything because I don't want to have. You know, if I make one change to it, I want to change everything. So I delete everything, even ones that were published, like V-neck and tank top. And I start all over and uncheck use size. It was very, 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 very annoying. And that happens to me all the time still. Um, like I said, if, if you don't want to sell use sizes to begin with, just uncheck it and save publish settings. Uh, and on that, um, you can't change colors. So once I lock this in and I submit it, and, and I've had somebody say, oh, can I get this shirt in purple? And it's like, well, I don't have it checked in purple. I can't go in and edit the listing uncheck red for purple it's grayed out you can't do anything about it so in that instance i will then create a the exact same listing same description seo everything about it same image and then i'll just do the the one-off sizes so instead of just wasting one listing what i'll do is i'll do all the other one-off sizes that i don't currently have as long as they they match because if i have a white text and a white shirt it's gonna look dumb so that's kind of i only do that a 
really with request because otherwise it's too much to manage but i do have people asking that from time to time especially with halloween coming up you know they want the orange colors they want the red colors they want the purple colors which are not traditional colors that would sell year round um so i wish i knew i could edit the colors ahead of time how many times i've had to uh delete listings and be like oh okay this one's not that popular i'm gonna just put the purple now i've kind of learned to just create another listing with it if you have space available if you don't have space available don't do it so uh these are kind of the top five i know some of them might be more than top five like top 10 with all the little tips and tricks with like the colors and the rejections but these are kind of the top five things in my mind i wish i knew before i started and when i started to save me time to save me rejections to save me headaches to know when to push back when not to push back what colors to use you name it I, I wish i would have known these things um with that said uh please check out uh, merch resize uh, i will try to put a link in the description if i remember and, and look at the guidelines right here and um if you haven't already check out the pretty merch tool i highly recommend it and you can see these are kind of some of my sales uh for the previous month and this month i'm not doing an income report but you can see uh i do sell quite a bit on on Amazon. Uh, yesterday was actually a slow day, but you had some decent uh, um, sales. So this is a part of a reason why I think you should be listening to me and why you should, should be subscribing. If you haven't, please click that subscribe button and, and like this video, comment if you have any questions to show you that I am legit. I'm not just making this stuff up. Uh, like I said, I stick by the $5 passive income way, $5 a day is more than $1,800 a month. That's a free vacation at the end of the year. Uh, if you want to make more than $5, if you can, great. You know, you can do what you do in merch and you can apply it to Etsy. You can apply it to Redbubble. You can apply it to Tee Public, Teespring, whatever industry you're in, uh, or country you're in whatever it is you you can do it so don't don't think you have to make millions of dollars to be successful five dollars is a lot it is a lot of money especially if you're in like a, a rural country or a rural state something like that i mean i live in southern california so five dollars not that much but like i said i take a free hawaiian vacation at the end of the year so with that said uh like i said please subscribe uh please like and comment as well and if you have any topic suggestions i'm, I'm open to it on thursday i will be posting another top trends of the midweek uh if you haven't checked out those videos uh, previously please do and if you haven't checked out any of my previous videos please do uh please click my name and i have a lot of informative videos that i give out for free like i said i don't sell a course i don't plan on selling a course anything like that i can give you this information for free to help you all uh you know make that five dollars a day so with that said i will talk to you guys on thursday thanks